With Mr. McKenna's learning, it's learning of a different kind. With Mr. McKenna's learning, I hope that you might find something new that you have never tried before. Just some stuff to stop your brain from getting bored. No! Three degrees. Oh, you who hi. Hello, you lot. Hey, listen, today's little video is something I did at the weekend. I did another live lesson, but for somebody else this time. So it's like the second part all about fungi. So if you wanted to know a little bit more, brush up. This is your chance. Um, this was quite exciting because the lady I did it for, uh, she's a wildlife expert who goes all over the world making wildlife films for the BBC and stuff. Lizzie Daily Wild. You can maybe look at her YouTube channel. And um, she has asked a hundred people over the last six weeks every day there's been one or two experts so people who know all about sharks people who dive with sharks people who are parrot experts leopards film cameramen sound people uh, amazing she's had steve Backshell, deadly 60 naomi's nightmares in, uh, in nature so these are big names so of course she needed the number one person to speak about fungi they weren't available so, of course, the next five weren't either. And then maybe it was me. So I got to do fungi for her on YouTube. And so this is the lesson. I've took the first bit out because you've already heard that stuff before. Okay, I hope you enjoy your daily dose of fungi. Bye. Take care of yourselves and each other. Bye. Let's move on a little bit. What can we do? Come on. Let's have a, let's have a game. I'm having to read it backwards. Sorry for me. Can you beat me? All right, little game time. Uh, so here's my special... Uh, prop. It's a true or false game. Okay, first one. Uh, cabbage parachute. True or false. Next one. King Alfred's cakes. Powdery piggyback or the captain's crown. Okay. Which one of these do you think is true or false? I'll give you four seconds. Make your pick. Got a choice? Are you ready? First of all, we'll go to cabbage parachute. True or false? It's true. It's a real one. Ooh, was that you? What about King Alfred's Cakes? True. Also a real fungus name. Okay. We're down to two. This is it. Powdery piggyback. Is it a real fungus? Yes, it is. Which means the captain's crown was my false one, my red herring. Okay. If you chose any of those, you're wrong. You're out. If you were correct, if you beat the fungi guy, well done. I've got a prize. It's uh, this. I've got a free air guitar for everyone that won. I've got one here, actually. I've got um, an example. Look at that. It's quite a nice model. Free air guitar, I'll send you each one of those, okay? Sounds lovely. All right, moving on. So well done. A little taster of some of the names there. Right, let's get to the meaty bit. Uh, super spores. Spores, our next science word. Let's get it up, it's on a stick and everything. Spores, our next science word. Spores are oh, essentially the seeds of a mushroom, okay, or a fungus. It's the seeds. So the same way that flowers or... Um, uh, plants have seeds and fruits and what have you. Everything, every living organism wants to recreate, wants to reproduce and make more of itself. And they use their seed to do that. And mushrooms and fungi have them too. Okay. Now it's the way that they get rid of them that's pretty cool. That's what I'd like to share with you a little bit today. Okay. So I've got four different ways that they're, they're really super cool. So let's move on. Here we go. Uh, first one, their first strategy is using the wind. Now, as a mushroom grows like this, it grows up and out of the ground. Little point to actually, a little teaching point there. The reason it has this stem here is to lift it up and grow up and up and away and above the grass. So the higher it is, the more chance that when the spores drop out from underneath this underside here between these gills is where all your, your spores are made. When they drop out, they've got more chance of blowing off in the wind. If it didn't have that stem, it should straight onto the ground. So the higher the stem can get, the better chance of further dispersal, which is better chance for the fungi to reproduce. OK, so this one here, it drops out of the gills and out and away with the wind. And it doesn't drop tens, hundreds, thousands, it drops millions of spores. You can't see them with your eye, but get loads together and you can see them all. Sometimes you'll see them all dusting away, okay? Millions at a time, it's a wonderful thing. They're all around us all of the time, by the way. It's probably some in my bedroom right now. They're all around us. Okay, microscopic. Okay, so there's wind, it uses the wind to push it off and find the nearest substrate or any substrate that's uh, an ideal place for it to uh, grow again, a substrate being the thing to live on. So for some fungi, quick bit about substrates, that could be dead or dying wood. It could be poo. Uh, dung is a big one. There's loads of dung specialists. Uh, it could be horns, feathers, loads of different places, okay? Or they're just the soil. Let's move on. Another way, another strategy, rain. 
there's a beautiful thing, people. There's a beautiful thing called the bird's nest fungus. Okay, if you do nothing else after this, at least just Google bird's nest fungus and have a look at a picture of it. They are beautiful. They're like tiny little bird's nests. And they're inside, if you look inside the basket, they've got these eggs. And each one of those eggs is holding tons and tons of spores, okay? Uh, it's a beautiful thing, but it's microscopic. It's uh, No, not microscopic. It's just very small, sorry. So it's smaller than my fingernail. Each fruiting body, but you can get hundreds in a little area on rotting wood. It's a beautiful thing to see. I've only met it a couple of times. Not that common. If you find a bird's nest fungus, do a dance. Do a dance or something like that. A bit of fist bump in the air. Fist punch. Um, so what the rain does, I'm, I'm, I'm going away again. The rain comes down and it fills up. The, um, to, to release the spores, it fills up that little nest, a bit like a bucket, fills up and up and up like that until eventually, whoosh, pours over the edge, washing away the spores with it. Again, dispersal, that's what it's trying to do, get those spores away to new ground to make new fungi. That's a rain one. Let's have a look at this one. Uh, mechanical, superb, this one. Mechanical, I've got an example. I've got an example I'm going to show you. So some fungi release their spores uh, from a sack. And what happens is the sack will sit there like a little ball and eventually, when the, when the spores are ready to go, they're waiting, waiting, there's a little hole at the top. And if something like, this is a mechanical process, if something like a stick or some rain or um, maybe an animal's foot treads on it or maybe I poke it, a human pokes it, a little bit like a blowhole on a whale, it throws those spores into the air. Uh, I've got, <laughs> this is going to look rubbish for you, but it's brilliant to me. I'm going to put something dark up here so you might be able to see against it. And I've got a little crusty old earth star. Ah. Oh, but it's a beautiful thing, this. The spores live on for ages in this. And you can find these fruit bodies all year round, even though they're fresh uh, in the autumn time, a typical season for most fungi. But I found this old one, and there's still spores inside it. So if I give it a tap, let's see if that process against the black, you might be able to see the spores come out. Oh, come on. Yes! I, I, I think I heard the whole country go, whoa, which is nice, isn't it? Uh, so there you go, a little puff. A mechanical process there to release those spores okay the pressure inside builds so much pff, it has to blast them out let's move on how am i doing for time oh let's move on hey up oh, can't see anything with that moving on uh let's have a little insects oh this is a belter there is a fungus called the stink horn the common stink horn there's a few different types as well wonderful ones there's an octopus stink horn google that as well while you're at it um and it grows up quite big like this, put this big column, and on top is this bulb covered in something called a gleba. I'm going to do another science word, and it's that's a spore mass essentially, a mass of condensed spores. And it's a greeny brown slime that sits on top, and it smells of poo and death and rotting meat. And what loves those things? Flies. So the flies come in, they get a whiff, they get a sniff, they come in, they land on it, those spores stick to the legs, and then when they fly off again and land in all the places they do, What's happened? We've got spur dis uh, spore dispersal. Fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant mechanism. One of the only fungi you can smell before you see it. If ever you go on a foray looking for them with other people, you'll hear someone go, I can smell a stink on. And then it's all eyes on who can find the stink on. Fantastic thing. They reek. It, it, sickly sweet smell. I, I don't mind it really. Um, and they grow from witches' eggs. Oh, I could do a whole 20 minutes on a stink on. Right. Next section up the pong. Um, fungi have incredible smells. Some, you know, as I, as I did a little bit more research for this to find some extra ones out, you wouldn't believe me. You wouldn't believe me if I said it, but I'm going to try and tell you a few, share a few with you. Okay. Give them a sniff. It's a scratch and sniff job, this. It's a really important ID part. I've not talked about that today, about the whole identification process, because in itself, it's a beautiful thing. Because you look at gills, how they attach to the stem. Do they go down? Do they go up? You look at the cap, the color, the way it cracks, what it's growing in. And then one of the things you will also do sometimes is give it a sniff. You might not know what something is. It looks a bit like three other things. Sniff. Whoa. And straight away, you know what you've got. And it, that can be the key identifying feature from it being something else. And that's so exciting that you're using all your senses. Ooh. So this, uh, this is a small list of some of the different smells. Believe me. Coconut. The coconut milk cap's beautiful. Sm straight away, I think of sun cream. It's gorgeous. It's got the coconut milk cap. We've got uh, the goat's cheese. Yeah, goat's cheese web cap. I can't read them back to front. Uh, yeah, the rotten cabbage. There's a cabbagey smelly one. Curry. Another milk cap, a curry milk cap. Bed bugs is funny because whenever I find this one, there's a common milk cap called the oak bug milk cap. Whenever I find that on a foray, I say, okay, everyone, uh, pass this round and everyone give it a bit of a sniff, see what you think of this. And uh, people often say, uh, I'll tell them it's bed bugs. And they'll go, what, what do bed bugs smell like? And I'll say, I don't know. But if ever I get them, I think I'll know because I'll be able to smell that mushroom. 
it's, it's, a, it's a fact without much depth, isn't it? I'll not use it again. Okay, I'll learn from everything. This one's one of my favourites, almonds. There is a beautiful mushroom called the Prince. Not so common, and when you find it, you just feel delighted. It's covered in golden scales, and it smells. If you give it that scratch, it's the scratch bit on the edges. It reeks of almonds. It's just the most wonderful waft. Who would have thought it? Um, don't think it finishes there. It doesn't. There's more smells. We've got honey, engine oil. These two are both wax caps. And when you're out and about, it can be the difference. Again, I mean, engine oil. And it's true. They really do. Um, overripe pears, wet flour, mouse pea. Never met that. The mouse pea pink girl. Never met that one. Uh, and even mashed potato, um, which makes... Uh, I do have an anecdote. I have a better one than the ones I started with. Uh, I did um, a pasta mushroom round early this year on a foray. And the, the ranges of smells, because it's very subjective, ranged from uh, one person saying meat and potato pie and another person saying banana milkshake. So there you go. Uh, the first few times you smell a mushroom, you might think, oh, it's just mushroomy. But the more you get to know something like anything in your life, the more you become familiar. You see those little nuances, those little differences. And in this case, you'll smell them. OK, it's time to start wrapping things up, isn't it? I've got to come to the end. Well-being. OK, I said I would talk about the well-being and the science of this. Look, we've got to look after our habitats. We know that in terms of conservation. Um, and the best thing we can do is care for those spaces that we find fungi in. Um, but by being out and about, uh, a real point that I'd like to mention is your well-being and how good it is for it. It literally ticks all the boxes for well-being. It was only recently that it dawned on me. I thought about this inherently inside for a while. In fact, there's a guest speaker again on Earth Live Lesson tomorrow, uh, Joe Harkness, bird therapy. And he pulls it apart for birding, why it's uh, great mindfulness and great well-being. And there's absolute parallels with fungi. Um, so uh, the five different areas. Physical is one of the five areas of, of well-being. Yes, it's physical. Sometimes you can walk for miles and miles looking for mushrooms. You can go up and down hills. So we're all right there. We're outdoors, fresh air. Uh, social. I'm in a, a, a couple of different clubs and we go out together and we're looking for fungi or you can go just with your family and it's a lovely thing to do and the, the joy of finding fungi and say, what's this, what's this? Beautiful. It's a social thing. Mindful, that's a big part of this. Mindfulness. Even mindfulness breaks down to different things and using your senses, being present is a big one. Fungi use nearly every single sense. Smell, sight, spotting them, Sound, I have to ignore that one, forget that. Uh, oh, look at me trying to think of all, this, all the different senses. Taste is one. Not going to go down that route at the moment, but there are some red hot milk that come out of some of these things that are lactation. Not going to go down the, the, uh, the edibility routes at the moment. And there's another sense that I can't think of off the top of my head. Uh, and the last part of well-being is learning. Every time you go out and you find something you've not found before, th th there's a whole new learning to be done, isn't there? Because you'll take it home, I'll get a book. It's not in that. Or it could be that. I'll get another book. I'm cross-referencing. I'm Googling. I'm on Facebook to ask friends. And suddenly you've got this whole wealth of knowledge coming back to you consolidating your learning. Learning something new is wonderful. Like I said, it's a hobby for life. How excited am I? I've got something I can enjoy for the rest of my life. And I know it's not a fad. Some things I fall out of love with very quickly. I go throw myself in and then I'm not bothered. This, I just, I'll never get out. So I hope that something like that happens for you too, because it's just full of joy. Everywhere you go, like I said, go to Chester Zoo and I'm looking at the fungi in the flower beds and not the animals. I cycle to work and I'm like that at the grass verges. Please cycle responsibly. Whoa, what was that? And I'll pull over on my bike and have a look what that was. Because fungi are all around us, whether it's your gardens, your parks, grass verges, roundabouts, beautiful ancient woodland. They're all around us all of the time. In different and in looking different and at different seasons, different types, but they're always around, and that's just wonderful. But we've got this 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 gift at our fingertips all the time. And that I think is it. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care. I'll see you later. Goodbye and happy hunting. <laughs>